Welcome back my fellow Keepers of Colonies. I am The Colonialist and in today's episode I have something rather special. Its Latin name is Ritido Ponera Metallica, also known as the green-headed metallic ant from Australia. So before I go any further, this species is amazing, so stay with me. I purchased this single queen colony from Ants Davy. Guy's an absolute legend, links in the description, check him out. And they are being housed in this beautiful Ritido Ponera Metallica custom-made outworld and eight-chamber Etong nest from Ant Boy UK. Find the links in the description. And also special thanks to Novo Ants who gave me a great amount of advice. He's been fantastic to chat with over a private message. And his content is truly amazing. So check him out because he's got really awesome videos on Ritido Panera Metallica and I got a lot of my information on them from him. Even now I still spend hours, days and even weeks reading research gate papers, another fantastic source if you're ever looking up for research papers written about ants and various other websites like AntWiki, AntWebs and so forth because they can help you get a lot of knowledge but never as much knowledge as someone who's kept the species themselves and can give you you know hands-on advice of how they've raised successful colonies. Following on from all the advice I've been given and have gathered, I decided that I was going to do a bit of an experiment with this colony. So get ready to jump down in the comments and let me know what you think. And at the end of the episode, I'll be sure to let you know. So as you may have thought, this is a founding colony and I've given them an eight chamber Etong nest, which could be too large for them. So I decided to give them options. In the left side of the outworld, which is escaped natural outworld, they can nest within the substrate. They have a buried test tube, which you can just about see to the left in through the dirt with a water reservoir inside. And then to the right, they have the piece of PVC tubing that takes them into the eight chamber Etong nest underground. And they also have a cork bark shelter and a scattering of sort of wooden pieces, which is actually uh, orchid bark. So you know what to do, hop down in the comments, let me know where you think they're going to nest and watch till the end and I'll let you know. I'm sure I've already mentioned how beautiful the coloration is of this species being metallic green, but that's not the only thing that makes this species quite incredible. This species is polygene, so it has multiple queens. On top of that, they use a completely separate system to keep the colony going in the event of the queen passing away. The workers are gamma gates. The gamma gate system is where a worker can become fertile and produce other workers to continue the colony. Sometimes this completely replaces having a queen, so certain species only have gamma gates. This species is incredible because it has both. It has queens that are larger than the workers and live longer and it has workers who can become gamma gates. They'll produce male drones occasionally so you'll see that quite often in a colony it's just male drones produced by rogue workers who are trying to you know put in their dominance and lay an egg and it slipped in and it became fertilized. You can actually see that in this colony if you look back at where I zoomed in at the test tube a rogue worker has produced a male drone. So although their survival rates are highly improved with this system of mixing queens and gamma gates, it also creates an incredible behavioural system that's unlike other species of ants. Let's talk Lazius niger for instance, the common black garden ant. Now when a single worker wants something to happen, a single worker will need to recruit more workers and then a decision will be made on which one has the largest amount of numbers that outvotes the other one and the larger group will simply take a decision for the colony. In Raitido Ponera, a single worker can control and make these decisions on their own and enact the entire thing. And I'll tell you now, I've been incredibly lucky to capture this on footage. So I'll give you a warning. It's a lot of back and forth, but if ant behavior is something that interests you then this is actually quite an incredible display i have shortened it so i've cut out the time that the ant disappeared and um you know i've i've tried to shorten it as much as possible that's why this episode is 18 minutes 
So I'll go into what happened. I placed the colony into the new setup and I gave them various options on where they could possibly nest. And for a while, as you can see, this worker came out, she scouted around and she's had a look. So eventually she gets braver and she finds somewhere that she finds quite exciting. And in the blink of an eye, I mean, if I had have looked away, I would have missed it. This single worker makes a decision that will affect the entire colony. This single worker takes it upon themselves to move the entire colony to what she believes is the most suitable new home location for them. Before all the action starts, I'm just going to go into a little bit of care advice while we wait. So speaking to Novo Ants, he told me that he keeps his colonies at around 20 degrees Celsius and the information that I had been following and gathered previously gave a lot higher temperatures. So for most of the heat wave, I didn't bother to heat them. And at the moment, I only provide them with a small amount of heat from the heat cable, which keeps their setup between 20 and 24 degrees Celsius and the colony has actually just exploded at this heat. Their, their growth rate is quite rapid and I believed being a Panera species it would be quite slow but the queen lays a lot and she produces a lot and it's been incredible because when she arrived it was just her and a small clutch of eggs. This species is found in Eastern Australia near Tasmania. So if you're looking for references, check out that region. The queens are around eight millimeters and have a greeny metallic purpley color. And the workers are around four to five millimeters with the same coloration. Just as an audio cue, the move is about to begin. So keep an eye on the footage while I talk. The worker is about to appear in the footage and she is really excited you can tell by the way she's moving she's eager to get back and she's eager to kick things off and it, it is actually quite incredible to watch I, I was quite intrigued not having had the species long and certainly not outside of the test tube setup there was actually in a small tubs and tubes setup with the red australian sand which you can see I first thought that this worker would come back and grab another worker to check out the new location but no, she goes straight in for the queen. She grabs the queen and she drags the queen over kicking and screaming to the new colony location, which I thought was quite incredible to watch. There's this one worker showing that it is the dominant worker. This worker makes the decisions for the colony. And the first thing she takes to the new location is the queen. One thing I expected to see from this perhaps was the workers or the queen coming out from the new location because perhaps they weren't happy about it but this didn't happen as soon as this worker took them there they disappeared and that's where they have remained so continuing on with the care information while this worker makes its trips back and forth carrying various workers brewed by larvae and brood this species is quite adaptable so you can give them an etong nest an acrylic nest tubs and tubes set up or a natural setup i've gone for a bit of a combination of everything just to see what the colony would choose for itself and to be honest when we get there I, I was quite surprised that it was the choice that was made just to note this species will need to be provided with some substrate in their nesting area due to the fact that they spin cocoons and they use tiny fragments of that material to spin the cocoons with Thinking about it, I should have mentioned possibly nine minutes before now that this species does sting and is known to have quite a potent, powerful and painful sting. So just be aware if you have allergies or you're not looking for a stinging species, then that's something I certainly wouldn't recommend with this species. Another interesting thing to note is when you provide this species a prey item as in protein 
the workers are going to need to drag that protein back to the nest so it's often advised to feed them close to the entrance to the nest when they're founding so that the workers can drag this carcass back because their larvae will feed on the carcass itself as in they will place the larvae to the carcass and it will feed off the protein as and when it's hungry. So far successful feedings with this colony include protein jelly which was quite favoured. They like waxworms, earthworms, dipterans, so various mosquitoes, fruit flies, blue, blue bottle flies and green bottle flies. They like crickets, locust and also cockroaches. I fed them dubia roaches. Another point to raise is this species is unable to climb vertically up glass or acrylic so that's also something to consider because you don't necessarily have to lock them in however saying that every colony one day is going to have a nuptial flight so always have a setup that you can lock down because once they have male drones and female elates they're going to want to fly and it's really not nice coming into your house to find a thousand queens and about to be soon dead males flying about your house having an orgy Whilst founding, it's important to note that queens have quite an aversion to light, it's not something they're happy about, however the species as a whole is incredibly confident, they send out lone workers who are incredibly capable and skilled hunters. One of the things that truly amazed me about this footage is this lone worker does not take a break, it does not stop, she goes back and forth and she's lifting items that are often twice as large as her breezing them over rough terrain unsteady terrain and she just doesn't seem to tire she just keeps on going so imagine if you was something that this worker had set its sights on as in a prey item of the colony i genuinely feel quite sorry for you because these things are ruthless I'm going to drop a little colonialist spoiler right now so if you don't want to know skip ahead just a couple of seconds but I've actually ordered a three queen colony a polygene colony from Ants Davy because I've been told that a polygene colony acts differently to a single queen colony and that's something I'd like to observe. I've also heard rumours that a polygene colony with three or more queens is likely to have a process of inbreeding where it's not exactly inbreeding on the sense of the skill set used by other species of ant where they clone themselves. This is actually possibly running the risk of inbreeding but each queen will produce males of different genetics with females of different genetics which attracts them to each other as if they came from different colonies which allows the actual inbreeding process to happen so it is possible that one queen might be fertilized by a male from the same colony who's confused by the pheromones but this is something i'm quite intrigued to see so i'm hoping that i can raise the next colony up to that and i think that'll be quite amazing to get on footage to see if they do inbreed if they breed within the nest and if they accept those queens back into the nest Okay, so drop me a comment and let me know what you think about this. Do you think I should leave it running and you can make the choice to skip ahead? Or in future, would you prefer that I added it as bonus footage and linked it in so that you could link across and watch the full move? But if you skip ahead to 15 minutes 56, if you do not want to watch the rest of this move, then skip to there and I'll reveal where the colony has moved to and sort of end on the last bits of the episode.
if you skipped ahead, thank you for joining me again. If you didn't and you watched the whole thing, I really hope that you enjoyed that. Again, please just let me know what your thoughts are. Drop a link in the comments because I want to bring you the content that you'll enjoy. And this is it, actually. This is the cork bark sort of it's just a section of cork bark that was left over i initially gave it to them in their tubs and tubes and i was hoping it would make them feel comfortable moving into the new setup and actually there's sort of tunnels that go through this piece of cork bark which they're using and they are just nesting simply underneath the arch of this cork bark and within the cork bark which is also what it's covering up is the pvc tubing that runs underground and connects to the eight chamber etong nest so they're actually close to where i want them to be because as they grow eventually i would like to see them moving into the etong nest and i think that would be quite exciting to see when that happens the fantastic thing about that eight chamber etong nest from amp boy uk is it has slides so you can lock off the nest so they can only use half of it which would make it a four chamber etong nest and options like that i think are fantastic because in the long run all you have to do is open up that chamber and the nest that has more room and the ants can move into a bigger space rather than having to upgrade the etong nest when you get to that stage and buying a larger one so it's fantastic as it operates as a two in one i personally was surprised that the colony decided to nest underneath this piece of cork bark uh, if you know more about Raitido ponera and their nesting habits let me know if you think it's a surprise that they've ended up there and they haven't burrowed somewhere or ended up in the eating etong nest or even moved into the buried test tube which is kind of where i personally thought they were going to end up first where did you think they ended up in the comments so that's the bit now where you hop in and let me know and this is it guys until next time thank you very much for staying with me till the end of the episode i hope you enjoyed it i know it's a long one if you like the long ones again drop a like subscribe 